On the evening of April 4, 1958, 14-year-old Cheryl Crane stabbed 32-year-old Johnny Stampanato, the boyfriend of her mother, actress Lana Turner, at Turner's rented home in Beverly Hills, California. Stampanato, an ex-Marine and an affiliate of the Cohen crime family, had been in a year-long relationship with Turner, which had been rocky and mocked with physical abuse. Crane and Turner alleged that the former had stabbed Stampanato in the stomach when Turner was ushering him out of her bedroom during a violent argument. Crane had heard the fighting and took a knife from the kitchen, planning to defend her mother. After Crane turned herself into the police in the early morning hours of April 5th, she was interred in a juvenile hall. A coroner's inquest was held on April 11th, during which the homicide was deemed justifiable and Crane was exonerated of any wrongdoing. She was released in late April and placed under the guardianship of her grandmother. Public response to the case was divisive, and numerous press outlets published articles criticizing Turner and likened her testimony during the inquest to that of a performance. Though Crane was cleared of any wrongdoing, Stompanato's wife filed a wrongful death lawsuit in June of 1958 against her, her father Stephen, and Turner, seeking $750,000 in damages. The lawsuit was eventually settled out of court in 1962 for a sum of $20,000. In the intervening years, Stompanato's homicide has been subject of conspiracy theories that Turner had in fact stabbed him and that Crane had taken the blame to protect her mother, though Crane has denied this. Stompanato's killing has also been depicted in various media and was the inspiration for the novel Where Love Has Gone in 1962, as well as its subsequent film adaptation. In 2007, Time magazine deemed the case one of the most notorious crimes of the 20th century. After four hours of testimony and approximately 25 minutes of deliberation, the jury deemed Stompanano's killing a justifiable homicide and exonerated Cheryl Crane of any wrongdoing. Crane remained a temporary ward of the court until April 24th when a juvenile court hearing was held during which presiding judge Alan T. Lynch expressed concerns over her receiving proper parental supervision. This hearing, unlike the coroner's inquest, was closed to the public. She was ultimately released to the care of her grandmother, and she was ordered to regularly visit a psychiatrist alongside her parents. So check out part two of this two-part series of the Johnny Stompanano Homicide, coming soon from classic movie recordings from the vault.